This is going to be a Christmas Eve service unlike any other in a year, unlike any other. I would like you to know that uh, the videos that uh, comprise our Christmas Eve service have uh, been made adhering to safety protocols, distancing, masking, uh, all of that. Uh, we have been safe in making our videos. I would like to thank those who uh, participated, who took some time to come in here uh, to do some readings uh, for us. Throughout the Advent season here at Dutton and Iona Station Baptist Churches, we have been looking at the Christmas story as told by the carol writers. And there's one hymn that has been uh, running through my mind. Uh, we didn't look at it. Uh, just uh, one line of one carol where it says, A thrill of hope, a weary world rejoices. And I think it's safe to say that we are living in a weary world. The next line goes on to say, For yonder breaks a new and glorious morn. And even though uh, we uh, cannot uh, gather together physically in the same building to celebrate our Savior's birth, it, it, it doesn't change the fact that Christmas is still happening, it is still here. We can still celebrate the fact that in Bethlehem 2,000 years ago, our Savior was born, and back then there was a thrill of hope, and the weary world rejoiced. And today, as we have made our way through a season of Advent, and we saw the hope that Jesus brought, and the peace that Jesus brought, and the joy that Jesus brought, and the love that Jesus brought, that even though we are in a weary world, we can rejoice. Rejoice because for yonder breaks a new and glorious morn. Because the Savior of the world was born. He was born, he lived, he died, he rose again. He ascended to Father, to the Father, he is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. And our weary world can rejoice because of who God is. Because of the gift that God sent. The sending of His Son. What Jesus did for us. And we can rejoice. Our weary world can rejoice because even though things don't look at like it right now, God is making all things new. And in the future, there will come a time when there's no need for vaccines. And where there's no crying or pain or death. And we can rejoice because a new and glorious morn, Sean, broke forth in Bethlehem. There will be a new and glorious morn breaking through when Jesus comes again. So I hope and I pray that our little Christmas Eve service that we have put together here brings you hope, brings you joy, brings you peace, and shares with you the love that God has for you. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you for a time that we have to gather, to gather uh, virtually, to hear the story of our Savior's birth prophesied so many years before it actually happened and reading the events that took place, so simple but so beautiful. I thank you for this time that we have to worship 
And I pray that everything that is said and done in our service brings honor and glory to your name. We pray these things in the name of Jesus. Amen. We light the Christ candle to symbolize God's promise fulfilled. For a child has been born to us, a son given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulders, and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Glory to God in the highest heaven, and peace to all on whom his favor rests. Blessed be the name of the Lord.
The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who dwelt in a land of deep darkness, on them has light shone. You have multiplied the nation, you have increased its joy. They rejoice before you as with joy at the harvest, as they are glad when they divide the spoil. For the yoke of his burden and the staff for his shoulder, the rod of his oppressor, you have broken as on the day of Midian. For every boot of the tramping warrior in battle tumult and every garment rolled in blood will be burned as fuel for the fire. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and of peace there will be no end on the throne of David and over his kingdom to establish it and to uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time forth and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God to the city of Galilee named Nazareth to a virgin betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, Greetings, O favored one, the Lord is with you. But she was greatly troubled at the saying and tried to discern what sort of greeting this might be. And the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give to him the throne of his father David. And he will reign over the house of Jacob forever. And of his kingdom there will be no end. And Mary said to the angel, How will this be, since I am a virgin? And the angel answered to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be called Holy, the Son of God. And behold, your relative Elizabeth, in her old age, has also conceived a son. And this is the sixth month with her who has called barren. For nothing will be impossible with God. And Mary said, Behold, I am the servant of the Lord. Let it be to me according to your word, and the angel departed from her. Now the birth of Jesus Christ took place in this way. When his mother Mary had been betrothed unto Joseph, before they came together, she was found to be with child of the Holy Spirit. And her husband Joseph, being a just man and unwilling to put her to shame, resolved to divorce her quietly. As he considered these things, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not fear to take Mary as your wife, for that which is conceived to her is from the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. As this took place to fulfill what the Lord has spoken by the prophet, behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which means God with us. When Joseph woke up from sleep, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded him. He took his wife, but knew her not until she had given birth to a son. He called his name Jesus. What hope we hold this starlit night? A king is born in Bethlehem. Our journey long, we seek the light that leads to the hallowed manger ground. What fear we felt in the silent age. Come 
to the earth you came, born into this world to save. God with us, Emmanuel, now we Is a shelter like no other. Your name, let the nations sing it louder. For nothing has the power to save but Your But you, O Bethlehem Ephrathah, who are too little to be among the clans of Judah, from you shall come forth for me one who is to be ruler in Israel, whose coming forth is from of old, from ancient days. Therefore he shall give them up until the time when she who is in labor has given birth. Then the rest of his brothers shall return to the people of Israel. And he shall stand and shepherd his flock in the strength of the Lord, in the majesty of the name of the Lord his God. And they shall dwell secure, for now he shall be great to the ends of the earth, and he shall be their peace.
And it came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. And this taxing was first made when Serenius was governor of Syria. And all went to be taxed, everyone into his own city. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, out of the city of Nazareth into Judea, unto the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be taxed with Mary, his espoused wife, being great with child. And so it was that while they were there, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a, in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them. And the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were sore afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you this born is born this day in the city of David, a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. Ye shall find the baby wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in the manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, good will toward men. And it came to pass as the angels were gone far away from them into heaven. This the shepherds said to one another, Let's go now, let's go even let us now go even unto Bethlehem and see this thing which has come to pass, which the Lord, which the Lord hath has made known unto us. And they came with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the babe who was lying in a manger. When they had seen it, they made known abroad the saying which was told them concerning this child. And all they that heard it wondered at those things which were told to them by the shepherds. But Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen, as it was told unto them. It came upon the man. 
Now after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king, behold, wise men came from the east to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he who is being born king of the Jews? For he saw his star when it rose, and have come to worship him. When Herod the king heard this, he was troubled, and all Jerusalem with him. And assembling all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Christ was to be born. They told him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for it is written in the, by the prophet, And you, O Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For from you shall come a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod summoned the wise men secretly and ascertained from them what time the star had appeared. And he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child, and when you have found him, bring me word, that I too may come and worship him. After listening to the king, they went on their way. And behold, the star they had seen when it rose went before them until it came to rest over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they rejoiced exceedingly with great joy. And going into the house, they saw the child with Mary his mother, and they fell down and worshipped him. Then, opening their treasures, they offered him gifts, gold and frankincense and myrrh. And being warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they departed to their own country by another way. Over the skies of Bethlehem appeared a star While angels sang to lowly shepherds Three wise men seeking truth traveled from afar Hoping to find the child from heaven Falling on their knees, they bow before the through your mercy
as we close, hear this Christmas prayer. O holy child of Bethlehem, descend to us, we pray. Cast out our sin and enter in. Be born in us today. We hear the Christmas angels, the great glad tidings tell. O come to us, abide with us, our Lord, Emmanuel. Amen.